In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we come to celebrate the Holy Eucharist. We thank God for His goodness to us. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. John Fisher, Bishop, and Thomas More, martyr, both martyrs. And as we celebrate this Holy Eucharist, we also pray for the following intentions, for the eternal repose of the souls of Teresita Shilada, uh, she's remembered on the ninth death anniversary. We also pray for the eternal repose of the soul of Willy Parami. And to be less unworthy for the celebration, we now ask the Lord for the gift of forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the Spirit of Truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Good Shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in martyrdom have brought true faith to its highest expression, graciously grant that strengthened through the intercession of Saints John Fisher and Thomas More, we may confirm by the witness of our life the faith we profess with our lips. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Abraham was a very rich man who livestock silver and gold. Lot, who was traveling with Abraham, had flocks and cattle of his own, and tents too. The land was not sufficient to accommodate them both at once, for they had too many possessions to be able to live together. Dispute broke out between the herbsmen of Abram's livestock and those of Lot's. The Canaanites and the Perizzites were then living in the land. Accordingly, Abram said to Lot, Let there be no dispute between me and you, nor between my herbsmen and yours, for we are brothers. Is not the whole land open before you? Part company with me. You if you take the left, I will go right. If you take the right, I will go left. Looking round, Lot said, all the Jordan plain, irrigated everywhere. This was before the land, the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord or the land of Egypt, as far as Sor. So Lot chose all the Jordan plain for himself and would move off eastward. Thus they parted company. Abram settled in the land of Canaan. Lord Lot settled among the towns of the plain, pitching his tents on the outskirts of Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were vicious men, great sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted company with him, Look all round from where you are you are towards the north and the south, toward the east and the west. All the land within sight I will give to you and your descendants forever. I will make your descendants like the dust on the ground. When men succeed in counting the specks of the dust on the ground, then they will be able to count your descendants. Come, travel through the land and breadth of the land, for I mean to give it to you. 
So Abram went with his tents to settle at the Ark of Mamre at Hebron, and there he built an altar to the Lord. The word of the Lord. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. Lord, who shall dwell on your holy mountain? He who walks with, without fault, he who acts with justice, he speaks the truth from his heart, he who does not slander with his tongue. He who does not wrong to his brother, who casts no slur on his neighbor, who holds the godless in disdain, but honors whose who fear the Lord. He who keeps his pledge come what may, who takes no interest on a loan, and accepts no bribes against the innocent, such a man will stand firm forever. This is them. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls in front of pigs, or they may trample them, and then turn on you and tear you to pieces. So always treat others as you would like them to treat you. That is the meaning of the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, since the road that leads to perdition is wide and spacious. And many take it, but it is not a gate and a hard road that leads to life, and only a few find it. The Gospel of the Lord. You, well, of course, you have heard already what we call the golden rule. Treat others as you would like them to treat you. Or in some, uh, of course, passages, it is in a negative way. Do not do unto others what you don't want others to do unto you. So it's a negative uh, 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 way of saying it. But here it's, uh, treat others as you would like them to treat you. This is actually a universal golden rule because in even in other, uh, uh, even in other religions, old religions, they also have this one as a, as a guide for a, uh, for a relationship with people. Treat others as you would like them to treat you. First of all, there is an implication. We presuppose that, of course, there is kind of self-knowledge. We know what is for our good, for our ultimate good before we even, uh, of course, uh, uh, treat others. So we have, we, it presupposes that we have a good self-knowledge. We know what is good for us, what makes us happy. We know what it means when uh, we love our own self. We know what it means when we look at the good or even ultimate good of our own self. And in that way, we can uh, project that our self towards others so that what we desire for ourselves because we know what is best for us that is what we also project towards others that's how we treat others otherwise if we have a wrong self-knowledge then that kind of treatment to oneself may not be actually good for others so it presupposes self-knowledge before we can even say well we treat with uh, others according to our own understanding of our own self, of our own good. And another thing in this golden rule is that Jesus said it is the fulfillment or meaning of the law and the prophets. Of course, the law would refer to the law of Moses and, uh, well, 
every law, prohibition, or commandment is actually geared towards a good relationship with people and with God. That's why he said the fulfillment of the law. That's why it's important to understand the law according to its uh, a purpose, to uh, end purpose that is for our good and the good for all, uh, of others. That is the uh, ultimate goal or purpose of every law. So that prohibitions are, uh, well, it's not about curtailing our freedom, but it's more of guiding us so that we can uh, relate well with others or with people around us. And also, fulfillment or meaning of the prophets. Every good news, actually, is good news, would usually lead us towards better relationship with each other and with God. So that the uh, general message of the prophets, if we are to interpret their message, is that uh, it helps us to understand how we can relate with each other and with God. So in that sense, it's the, the golden rule is the general goal, even the law and the prophets. So that we understand the law, we understand the prophecies in the Old Testament along that line of uh, improving or making the best of our relationship with each other. Brothers and sisters, this golden rule, of course, is exemplified twice to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. He has manifested to us what it means to treat others as you would like others to treat you. And he manifested that by his relationship with even the outsiders, with the, the poor, those who are needy, those who are sick during his time. And so brothers and sisters, we continue to uh, uh, take the kind of inspiration from the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. But after all, even following this rule will uh, give us or will lead us to our happiness or joy in this life as well as hereafter. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for as for your goodness we have received this bread to offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for as for your goodness you have received this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings you bring in commemoration of the Holy Martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift hearts. Let us give thanks to our Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised, your very sufferings are but wonders of your might, 
In your mercy, you give order to their faith, to their endurance, you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Those are the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Those are the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was tried and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, <coughs> Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was sanded, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of fine blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life in a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Vincent our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. <coughs> have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint John Fisher, and Thomas More, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. To those at home, you may join in this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, and that I love you above all things. I always desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come into my heart and I embrace you as I believe you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. May I never be separated from you.
Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, we have celebrated the Holy Eucharist. We go now in peace. Thanks be to God.